What's up? I guess it's uh, Keith here with Weekly Moto Reviews, and I'm reviewing uh, Hailstorm's new EP, the Reanimate 2.0 cover EP. Uh, if you remember, about a year or two ago, they put out the first one, and they covered thing. They covered uh, Lady Gaga and um, Heart, and Skid Row, and Guns N' Roses all on this EP, and they kind of followed suit similar with uh, with this one. Uh, right off the bat, um, first song they covered is a uh, track listening is a uh, Dissident Aggressor by Judas Priest, mm -hmm. and um, did a very solid job with it. They it sounds very similar to the original and. Listening to it, I couldn't help but compare it to the Slayer version, which I know from, which is from uh, their album South of Heaven. But um, I'm indifferent over which version I would like better because even though Slayer made it thrashy and they made their version like really freaking cool, um, Hailstorm kept it rock. And I mean, Lizzie can hit hits like the high note that Rob Halford hits toward the end of the song, so that's pretty cool. Uh and then they covered Get Lucky by Daft Punk, which is weird. Um, I'd never listened to Get Lucky or Daft Punk before. And so I listened to the song. The song had a nice groove to it, and I sounded very Hailstorm. And just for reference, I went and I listened to the original, and they could be two completely different songs. Like, that's, I, th I thought that was kind of cool. They kind of like what they did with the, the Bad Romance cover on the last one. They uh, made it their own. They took made it very Hailstorm. So I thought that was uh, really cool. They also did Shoot the Throw ACDC, which is, I feel, natural for them. I thought that this band was very ACDC-ish. If you listen to uh, Rock Show from uh, A Strange Case of, you will uh, you can tell what I mean. It's a very ACDC-sounding song. So, I mean, uh, and Shoot the Throw, they did, a, they did a good job. They, they stayed kind of close to the original with that, which I think, I mean, they didn't have to go all out and crazy. And then... Uh, Hell is for Children by Pat Benatar. Um, this was this song was good. The only problem that I had with it was that I guess they were staying true to the original with this because Lizzie didn't really show off her vocal range until until like the end of the song. Like then she started getting all you know have using all her range and up until then it was a lot more controlled, which was weird. And over you know a couple listens, I, I was okay with it. But I mean, at first I just. Couldn't do it, so... Yeah. Then, uh, they covered Gold Dust Woman by Fleetwood Mac, which is another song that, if, if they were to say that, that was their song, I could expect to hear that on a... on a Hailstorm album. It's, you know, they did a good job. It's all acoustic -y and... I mean, there's not really too much that I can say about it. I never really listened to the original. I did check it out, but it's very similar. And the last song they covered, which was probably a really big surprise by me, was 1996 by Marilyn Manson. And I don't know what to think, because I, for whatever reason, because I had to look it up on YouTube, could not find a, an original version of it. So, I mean, it was okay. It sound, I thought it sounded pretty cool. I mean, they honestly probably did a lot better than Marilyn Manson could. So, honestly, I, the, the cover was, was solid. All in all, this album was really solid. I feel like they did a good job of balancing out, making things their own, and sticking to the original. In the sense that, you know, songs like Shoot to Thrill, which they didn't really mess with too much. But then, I guess, like, songs like 1996 and uh, and uh, Get Lucky, they made it their own. So that it wasn't so vastly different. And it's kind of cool because, like, they didn't really change much of, like, Shoot to Thrill. Like, they shortened the solo a bit and they extended the outro of the song, which is which was cool. They added, like, another chorus at the end, which, which I liked. And, I mean, all in all, everything sounded spot on this album. Bass sounded good. Guitars were as good, if not better, than they sounded on their last studio album. RJ was spot on in his drum work. He did, did a really good job on this album. And Lizzie, of course, probably one of my favorite female vocalists, she did, a, she did an amazing job on this album, too. I think there were times where her voice might have been a little controlled. And, I mean, other than that, I don't... It, she did good, but then, because it's still, it's... it's she could tell she put her heart and soul into it, and so this was a good album. Um, I guess, so, if I had to give this album a rating, I'd give it, like, an 8 out of 10. I mean, it's not the best thing you're going to hear all year, but, I mean, I think it's solid. It's worth the listen. If, if, even if you just go on, like, YouTube and listen to it, it's it's worth the listen, I think. Um, yeah, this might, be, this might be a little short review, but, I mean, hell, 
I'm talking about six songs that, you know, probably a lot of people who are listening, who are watching this video probably heard all these songs before, so I don't want to go into too much detail. But, uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. So, uh, bye.